This is the Authentic Sex Podcast, real life conversations about sex, pleasure and relationships. I'm your host, Juliette Allen. This episode of Authentic Sex is sponsored by the Juliette Pleasure Wand. The Juliette is a premium crystal pleasure wand designed to heighten your sexual energy, increase self-love and self-pleasure, expand your orgasmic experiences and connect you to your true sexual essence. You can read more and purchase your own crystal wand by visiting my website wwwjuliet allencom Here we go. <laughs> I've potentially got COVID. Your child's been scratching your face and it's an intense time. <laughs> You bought this yeah, stuff. what's with it? If what's with his new thing, he gets in the bed in the morning for a cuddle and then he just literally he's obsessed with my nose. So he'll go, Mummy, kiss nose, kiss nose, but it's a trap because he doesn't just kiss it, he then bites it and then he launches in for a scratch. And that's why I've got this red fucking thing off in my <laughs> in my eye. You can barely see it and you look beautiful. Thanks. So, anyway, so, yeah. welcome. Welcome, my darling. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. And I just want to um, preface another uh, failure, which is I messaged you and I said, Juliet, what is your favorite food slash snack? Yeah, where the fuck is it? <laughs> <laughs> you said your top snacks were... What did I say? Milk specifically, B, apple crumble, and C, <laughs> onion <your> meat. <laughs> Lasagna meat, I meant meat lasagna. <laughs> she just wants the meat of the lasagna. Okay, how are we going to get this to her? I am and pregnant, remember? So there's, yeah. you know, it gets very specific towards the end of a pregnancy. <laughs> I loved it so much. I was like, this really specific. I don't really tell you the specificity of that. Um, but. Anyway, I went to the post office last week <laughs> to drop you <laughs> some of New Zealand's most delicious chocolate. Oh my and they gosh. were like, this isn't going to get, they were like, there's a chance this might get to her like the day of, and it's unlikely that it will get there the day of. And um, it's going to be $120. But <laughs> a $15 what? $15 bar of chocolate. And I was like, you know, we just don't have. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> this this the season yet so um that was quite funny but anyway that's what i need to tell you on this moment this is why you're empty-handed right now and you i'll make up for it later and i'll give to myself some milk chocolate um did you eat the chocolate that's the question i want to ask i've eaten the chocolate (laughs) that's probably why you've got a sore throat (laughs) That's that's why i'm dying Oh, I'm glad you indulged. Yes, yes, it was crunchy. It was. Oh, don't. I'm sorry. Okay, we'll move on from the food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually craving at the moment, and this is really weird for me. I don't get many pregnancy cravings, but I'm craving flavored yogurt. Very specific. Ooh. Not into yogurt, but um, I've got mm. three different flavors in the fridge. It is organic, so I feel a bit better about you know drinking from the cow's teat um but yeah really weird craving but I'm just rolling with it Mm. interesting what flavor specifically are you craving uh passion fruit and blueberry to be specific (laughs) (laughs) beautiful okay good to know for your next delivery (laughs) your next (laughs) yeah add that to the list (laughs) along with lasagna meat (laughs) That's actually what I'm feeling like right now. I feel like like a heavy hitting like iron inducing lasagna meat situation with like mm. beef liver or something in it. Yeah, that would be good. It would be good. Um, okay, so I just want to kind of um, explain to the audience first and foremost um, how I came to learn about you and your magnificence and how... Um, our relationship has evolved into this particular time. And so I started listening to your podcast, um, Authentic Sex, um, about a year before um, my ex-husband and I separated. 
And I remember listening to your podcast and just feeling like this is the most groundbreaking shit I have ever listened to in my whole oh. life. Like, I'd never listened to any kind of sex specific podcast. It was kind of at the forefront of the podcasting era. Um, and I just remember you talking about sex really frankly and really like um, it was really easy for me to digest. And I just was like, I've got to work with this woman in some shape or form because even your podcast alone had been really life changing for me. Mm. I don't know if I've told you that, but really, truly like inspiring and all the things. And so mm. I just want to first and foremost that say thank you for creating that amazing free content for the world to digest. And yeah, B, it was like truly transformational for me. And oh. then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, truly. And so then, great. yeah, like the sacred slut first one you did, I was like, oh my God, this is just giving me permission. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that first, I think it was like my first episode maybe. Yeah. And I was such a prude. I was such a prude. <laughs> oh, sacred slut. <laughs> you look at me. Okay, so then. Yeah, uh, now look at you sluzzing about. <laughs> <laughs> around town um, and the, yeah then I started working with you one-on-one -on -one with my ex-husband and um, you gave us a series of relationship therapy um, counseling coaching whatever we call it um, which was really defining for our relationship um, mm. and we met you in, the, in person went to one of your workshops with you and your existing partner mm. and um, yeah and then <clears throat> since then i've come on a couple of your podcasts and then now today i'm honored to have you on mine and it feels like a bit of a full circle magical moment so yeah well i've been on before though haven't i no not well, finger food is new but i've been on yours twice oh yeah you've been on mine of course this is exciting i thought i'd been on before for some reason why the hell haven't i been thank god i'm here yeah. <laughs> where was the invite for season Why one, I on season one? <laughs> whoa saving the best for last obviously <laughs> i was i really was okay, whatever so i want to know today the intricacies of your personal sex and love and relating history and experiences um yeah, I find it um, really intriguing when speaking to people that I feel like have been on a really um, huge journey with their sex and their relating and, and have kind of dedicated their lives to learning about it and uncovering it. And um, I just want to know the intricacies of what is going on behind the scenes. <laughs> Reveal everything. I'm quite happy to do that because I'm a bit of an open book. Yeah. But then I keep some things private, but yeah, let's, let's do it. People will love this. Well, yeah. my people will love it. Yeah. My people will love hopefully it. Hopefully yours will too. I think I, I will love it and hopefully you love it. <laughs> that's what <I> care about. <laughs> yeah. That's what counts. <laughs> that's what counts. Okay. So can you give me like a really brief <laughs> history of your, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> of your, <laughs> relationships and yeah you're relating in love experiences today. Mm. today okay um so we've got 45 minutes <laughs> heavy, heavy hitting you don't need to talk okay. about okay <laughs> all right so grew up and vowed i'd save my first time i had sex till i really loved someone i don't know where i got that from my parents didn't teach me that but i just saw all the other girls at school just getting fingered behind the um the toilets and all that at school and I was like I don't think I want that not that there's you know anything like that's pretty normal but for me I was like I'm just gonna wait till I really love someone so had sex at 18 with my first boyfriend and then um I kind of have gone in and out of being single but I've had some pretty big loves in my life um which I think they've all been so different and different circumstances and not necessarily relationships either haven't turned into relationships. So, um, I just feel so grateful for those 
mm. experiences and the heartbreak and everything because I think that's what's led me to being so great at what I do. Mm. Like, I mean, that's not very humble, but... No, there's no space for being humble. Oh, yeah. But just just because I've had such a diverse range of experiences not just in love but in life and um so yeah I um I guess one big one was I was in relationship with a woman for four years and that was just such a huge journey for me and um I learned so much about myself and so much about women and so much about being in a relationship with a woman and the challenges that that brings in our culture in such a heteronormative culture and mm. I feel so grateful for that um I really do mm. and also just having heaps of sex with another woman was you know something that I wanted to experience and um and then yeah and I you know became a mum at 23 so that was really young and that was a huge mm point in my life that changed everything and um inspired me to create like a lifestyle that supported me to be a really great mum but also have my career and mm. um yeah and then I met Nick um so this is a real short version obviously yes. of a yeah. lot of different ups and downs with relationships and all yeah. sorts <clears throat> but I met Nick six years ago and I'd just come out of the relationship with my then fiance woman, mm. and um, he oh, was just got engaged. Yeah, we got engaged. She proposed. Wow. We got engaged. At the time, marriage wasn't legal in Australia, so that was even weird because I was like, "Well, we're engaged, but we're not even allowed to get married." Like, oh, wow! Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. When did that become legalized in Australia? Uh, oh, not till recently. That was only like, what, three or four years ago it became legalized. Wow. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong if you're listening and you're like, you're way off the mark. But very, like, Australia is so behind. Wow, that's cooked. It really is. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, we were engaged but, you know, it didn't work out for various reasons. One being that I really do, I just couldn't see myself growing old with her. And I I really wanted to have more children and to be in a relationship where I felt just so certain that I was going to be able to have more children and stay in the relationship because I'd had a different experience with my daughter. And it has definitely been a tough road, you know, being single and parenting and yeah. and um I just I guess I just really believed in the fairy tale too of like surely you know I can experience what I've seen other people experience and anyway so I left that relationship and um got back on the dick which was oh <laughs> just so wonderful oh my like god I, Wow, how was that going from not having any dick for four years? To that was a long four years because I really love penises and I really love sex with men. Like I really love sex with women, but I really, really love sex with men. Mm. Um, so wow. yeah, the experience was just amazing. I slutted about for a while just because I had to, you know, get it out of my system. One must. Yes, one must. And then... um. And then I, yeah, met Nick. And then when I met Nick, I was just like, oh, my God, this is my guy. Like, it was just from the moment we met up and had a coffee, I just knew. Like, people say, you know, but I didn't believe that. I was like, come on, guys, yeah. that's just fairy tale shit. Yes. Um, I just knew. And, yeah, and even in the moment – in our second date, there was this moment where he hugged me and the, the like spirit of our little boy came in. I'm going to start crying. Oh my God. <laughs> I already cry easily, but then preggers, I cry even more easily. It's ridiculous. Here's a welcome. <laughs> the spirit of our little boy came in and I was like, Oh my God, we're going to have a little boy. We're getting married. 
what the fuck? I love this guy. I've loved him forever. And now he's back and we've found each other. I know. It was like when he when he hugged me in that moment, I just felt like I was home again in his arms. I know. It was just so surreal. And I cried and, you know, it was like, fuck, he's going to think I'm a Fruit Loop. Like, second date. I was half naked on the riverbank at Brunswick Heads. And, um, and I was like, I'm not going to tell him what I'm saying because, you know, he might be like, oh, we've got a Fruit Loop on our hands. She thinks we're having a baby boy and getting married. <laughs> <coughs> um, but anyway, oh, we've been together God. ever since wow. and been so deeply committed to each other. And, you know, it's been quite the journey. It still is. We have lots of challenges, but we also have a really, really strong foundation which I think is just so important for any relationship if it's going to last long term. Yeah. Oh. And now I'm pregnant with our second child. Oh. Um, so Nick really embraced Millie, my first girl, who's 17 in a couple of weeks. Wow. And then we had Sol in 2021. So he's nearly two. And now I'm due in August to have our second child together but our third child um oh my god yeah so wow 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 so where did you meet nick <laughs> instagram so um i was in relationship with my ex mm -hmm. and i got a, a dm no i wasn't so my ex and i broke up twice the second time was for good the first time was like you know a bit of a trial run um, yeah. but we broke up and we had a few months apart. And in that time, Nick DM'd me on Instagram, replying to some music that I put up and he, I saw the DM and was like, oh, who is this guy? Like not accepting. And then I kind of went and stalked him and was like, oh, he's hot. He has heaps of tattoos. Um, <laughs> obviously I was on the search for some dick. Yes. Um, but I also had a, also had a few lovers on the go, so I was like, I cannot add another one into the mix. Let's just keep him on standby. So um, I put <laughs> off <laughs> I put off having coffee with him for a while, yeah. and then um, I got back together with my ex. So I messaged him and was like, Hey, like I really I really do want to meet up with you, but I just got back with my ex, so yeah. it's a no go zone. Like I respect her and you and. And then, so he was so cool about it. It was so amazing. And then, yeah, we met up when I broke up with my ex. Um, I inboxed him and was like, let's do that coffee. And yeah. Oh my God, I guess, but how did the first coffee go? Was it just a coffee? Like what did that first no, day? It was just a coffee. He was late, which is like Rude. so fucking Nick. He has no concept of time he still runs late till today and it's like a big um what do you call it <clears throat> just conflict point in our relationship mm. but he was late but we had this coffee we went and sat at the beach just had a coffee chatted and um yeah it was just really cool and then he gave me a big hug at the end and he showed me the back of his van he had a van at the time <laughs> he just happened to open it and it was like now I look back, the van was so immaculate and there was like a big long didgeridoo on the bed. And I was like, oh my God, he's my dream guy. We can go on road trips. He's got a didgeridoo. It looks so clean. He's clean. Like that was just all, he must have just been late because he was just cleaning the van. Oh my God. Is and so or was it, was that just a facade to meet you? And and he you? does his best because he knows I'm a clean freak. But um, his cars are never clean, no. <laughs> his cars are never clean. So that was just a show. Um, but we ended up doing lots of road trips in that van and lo lots of sex was happening in that van. So, oh my yeah. Hot, 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 hot. I love this so much. And you mm. talked about, you talked about, um, at, like with you and Nick, obviously love at first sight and just this knowing of like, okay, this person, like I felt like you expressed, you felt like you were at home when you, mm. you hugged him on your second date. And um, you also expressed that there have been 
challenges, but there's always been this really like solid foundation between the two of you since the very Mm -hmm. beginning. I'm curious, what are the challenges that you guys have, what have the biggest challenges been that you guys have had to navigate through this relationship? Mm. Um, Well, the first big, I'd say the first big challenge was me wanting to have a baby with him sooner than he wanted. Mm. And because, you know, I'm older than him, I'm six years older. um, I was so ready just to start popping out more babies because I'd had such a big gap since the birth of my daughter. And so um, I brought it up, you know, a couple of months in that like he joked about women who get to a certain age and start getting desperate about having children. And I was like, Ooh, so we probably need to have a chat. Um, I could be one of those women, like I'm getting older and I remember we were on a road trip and it really killed the vibe. Like you could tell he was like, ah, oh, fuck. Okay. So, um, so that was a big process for us. It went over a couple of years because he wasn't ready to have children. Um, he even had a point where he was like, I just don't even know. Like, I can't even say I want to have children with you. Like, I'm just like not even there yet. And so we did a lot of therapy around it and got a lot of support. And, um, I basically got to a point where I was like, okay, so if there's no timeline at all, Mm. then and you don't actually know then we need to break up because I was like it was a non-negotiable for me to have more kids like I wasn't fucking about with that one so (laughs) um we so we actually had a break we decided on a month break no contact at all Mm -hmm. um and so that he could go away and think about it and it worked really well. Like we had the month off mm. um, and then we came back together and he still didn't know. And I said, okay, that means we're breaking up um, mm. because you've had ample time and there's a, there's a lineup of guys who'd probably ready to, you know. With me. Well, just like, yeah, I just was like. All right, that stage, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, so we broke up and then I think the breakup was when he was like, oh fuck. And he went away and did some men's work weekend and came back and was like, I figured it out. Like I've removed the blockages and I do want to have kids. I can give you like a two year timeline and we can start trying. So like, that was really good. Cause mm. you know, it, like I didn't need it to be straight away. So yeah. that was a big challenge. I just needed to know he was in. Two yes. feet into being coming a dad with me. Yes. So that was big. And like, oh my gosh, he is absolutely besotted with our son. Oh. And the best dad, as you can imagine, you know him. He's like just a 10 out of 10 dad. He's amazing. Oh. But he also is just like, he wants to just keep pumping them out now. Like he's like, I love being a dad. And oh. I'm like, yeah, I fucking told you so. I knew as soon as our <laughs> baby was born, you'd love it. But, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my heart. Mm. Fuck. So that was a challenge. Another challenge was actually moving in. So that was before obviously having kids. He didn't want to move in as soon as I wanted him to move in. And that actually caused a lot of conflict because I was like, what's the deal? Like, we're in love. We're in this for the long run. You know, why don't you want to move in? And he just wanted to take his time. And that's Nick. Yeah. That's his personality. He takes his time with everything, going back to even not having a concept of time and being late. Like he, no one tells Nick when to be somewhere or when you'll make, when you'll do something. It's like on his timeline. Caused yeah. a lot of conflict. Yeah. I have to interrupt this episode to let you know that today is sponsored by Pleasure School. Pleasure School is a monthly membership where together we study intimacy, conscious connections and how to embody our true sexual essence. Every month, students of Pleasure School access members-only educational content across a wide range of formats, including written, audio, video and guided home study. Pleasure School is led by myself and I'm also joined by other teachers who are pioneering in the fields of sexuality, relationships and holistic health. This is your chance to join a unique online school like no other in the world. 
Learn more and join Pleasure School at www.juliet-allen.com. That's J-U-L-I-E-T-A-L-L-E-N.com. Okay, wow. And what about, so do you, I hope you don't mind me asking, how old were you when you were having those conversations with Nick around, um, you know, you had your break and then he came to the realization that, you know, in a couple of years, I'll be ready to have kids. So I'm 41 in a couple of weeks. So let's go for, um, so six years ago. So I was probably, so that makes me 36 when I met him. I think I was 35 when I met him. Yeah. So 35, 36, probably around age 36 yeah. where I was like, yeah, I want at least two more kids. So like, yeah. let's, you know, and I, and I know women can have kids when they're for, in their forties. Like I know people who do, and yeah. we, this, I don't think this is our last. So fuck, I could be one of those women having a kid at age 43 yeah. or 44, but Ultimately, I wanted to be as young as possible. Yeah, because I, I asked that specifically because I'm 33, almost 34. I don't currently have a partner and that is a thing for me that I want kids. And I think there's so much like societal stigma around <clears throat> age, but also there's actual biological <laughs> like facts that exist around like the gap that we have to have kids. And... I feel less stressed out about it because of the fact that I just trust that if I'm meant to have kids, I will have them. But at the same time, yeah, I know it can be a real like um, dividing factor in a lot of relationships. And yeah, I mean, did that come into it for you? Like the age thing where you're like, I'm ready to have them now. Or was yeah, it the age thing was big. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not going to pretend it wasn't like, I yeah. think... I'm trying to hide this picture behind me, but if I go out, that looks like a <laughs> devil horns. I hate the artwork on the wall behind me. As I told you before, it's the one piece I let Nick have in the house. Cause, and now if I do that, it looks like I'm the devil. Before. I've been called the devil before by my exes, my ex's Catholic family, like devout Catholic. They yeah. honestly tried to tell her she's the devil. You need to get out. I was like, I am the devil and I will own it. And I will fuck you till the cows come home and um, we will go to hell together and there'll be orgies and drugs and all sorts. So tell them that. Anyway, back to it. Um, so yeah, age came into it for me, not because I, I wasn't like scared or fearful of having children in my forties because I really just think that's a big who hard the medical system make around like the more you the older you get the higher risks and they put all these stats in women's head and scare them it was just more like i want my daughter to to you know be in the same house when she grows up with her siblings and yeah. i know you know she's getting to an age where she could leave home like in the next couple of years who knows but also yes. like i want energy levels i want high energy levels because toddlers yeah. and kids are high energy and I don't want to be this like haggard 43 year old, just like, fuck, I'm pregnant again. And like, <laughs> it's probably going to happen, but like, you know, and since having soul when I was 38, when he was born, but 39, basically 39, it's definitely a, a, a different experience to when I was 23, mm -hmm. like hugely different on the body, the energy yeah. levels, etc. So, yeah. Hmm. What is the difference between like the body comparatively to when you had a kid when you were 23 and, and now? Well, when I was 23, I birthed her and within six weeks, my body just was back to normal. I was strutting about in bikinis, yeah, feeling absolutely fabulous, had all the energy in the world, was like jogging on the beach or like, you know, just so different. Yes. And then... Yeah, when I had my son a couple of years ago, I just felt like it was a lot harder to feel great in my body again, to be honest. Like I had, it, it was tough and um, just my energy is and my patience is lower 
at this age. Yeah. It's like I've had all these years of, yes, been parenting Millie, but also had a lot of free time because she's been at her dad. So I really value solitude and I value sleep-ins and I value movies at night and it's all changed. And so mm. it's like I'm a bit more set in my ways too. Yeah. And then how have you found that that's affected um, your relationship dynamic, having kids and not having those freedoms? Oh, it's, we we're just chatting to a midwife yesterday about this. It's so, um, such a different experience this pregnancy as opposed to the last because how, how it's affected our relationship is like we have less sex, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's because I've been breastfeeding up till only a couple of weeks ago. So when right. you breastfeed, it hormonally shifts your hormones to be able to provide for that child. And mm. often your sex drive is lower. And then they say, once you stop feeding, your libido will come back. Well, I got preggers intentionally again while breastfeeding. And then, so I was pregnant and breastfeeding and that's a double, that's like a double whammy on the libido. Like you yeah. You know, your libido naturally is going to say, well, I ain't got time to make more babies, basically. You got no time on your hands. You yeah. are not getting fucked anytime soon. <laughs> so how do you navigate? Yeah, absolutely. Like, that would honestly be the last thing on my mind. And I know, like, for all my friends that have babies, this is the same conversation. This is the same chat that they have. Like, they just don't really want to fuck after, mm. whilst they're breastfeeding, after having a baby, after going through the, you know, experience of birth. Like, they just don't. And mm. I'm curious, like, obviously that's fine for you. And, but how does, like, with Nick, like, he's a man, he has needs. Like, how do you navigate that um, between mm. you? How does the relationship navigate that? Well, it actually hasn't been a conflict point for us. So I wouldn't say it's a challenge because Nick, I would say Nick naturally has a lower libido than mine. He has a normal libido and I have a high libido outside of this season. Mm. So it kind of, it's actually quite nice not to have the mm. dynamic of me always wanting more, 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 more. Mm. Um, it's it evened out the playing field in a way with sex with us. Um, and of course I think he, he would love more sex, no doubt, but he can masturbate. Like I have no issues with him masturbating. Yeah. Um, and I like, it's not that we're not having sex. Like we still have sex and you know, I'm happy to give like my favorite would just be an easy hand job at the moment. Just like, <laughs> you know, just easy. Just like um, a, a subtle just a slutty hand chop just like <laughs> whack some oil on let's get this let's get this shit done um you can pretend i'm a prozzy or whatever you want whatever turns you on i don't care like sometimes i'll just role play just what was i oh the other day i was a doctor i just was like oh fuck it i'll just be a doctor just you know mix it up for him like yeah because we both kind of like got our weird kinks and stuff he doesn't have doctor kinks or prostitute kids, to be honest. But I probably do. So I was like, mm, I'm going to have to do a checkup and see if it's working. And, like, I pretended like he was a younger guy and, you know, like I was taking advantage of him in the doctor's oh suite. Yes. Um. So, like, we just do stuff like that that tides him over and it turns me on. <laughs> It turns me on too half the time. Next minute I go from being this big whale of a pregnant woman, like with some oil on my hand being like, come here, I'm your doctor. And then I'm like, I really feel like a dick up my ass. What do you reckon? And he's just like, whoa, things really escalated quick. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so we I know. Well, it can go from zero to a hundred with me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's right. But yeah, so we do have a sex life. It's just way less existent as before. Um, but you know, as for challenges as parents with young kids and a teenager, it's it's challenging. Like we have so much less time for each other, and yeah. so excuse me, so much less time for solitude. And we both find that really fucking hard because we both love to just be by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah journey isn't it mm -hmm. yeah yeah it just requires <laughs> consistent communication yeah 
therapy we get couple therapy once a month like a two-hour session amazing we have to yeah I was gonna ask that actually around like the level of work that you feel I don't know like I guess my question is from the very initial stages of you and Nick meeting each other did you find that there was a level of like work that you had to put in to create the dynamic that you had and then compared to now like do you find that the level of work that you're having to put in is more or less or consistently the same throughout the relationship um i'd say it's less now weirdly like at the start there were a lot of things we had to iron out Mm. to get to the point where we were solid um but but we still do a lot of work. Like I'll do therapy by myself once a month. Then we do couples therapy once a month. Yeah. And then Nick does therapy once a month. So we, we're consistently just committed to working on stuff because stuff's always coming up. Like the latest is, to be honest, the latest is like the fact that my income's dropped because I've had soul and had yeah. time off and I'm in my motherhood season. And then I'm about to have another baby. So it's going to drop even more because I'm going to have two yeah basically two under two and so what's come up around that is like the change in finances and income mm-hmm. and how do we balance it all because I've always earned a lot you know yeah. it my career has been really successful and but because I'm my energy is elsewhere I'm earning a lot less so like yeah. all right we need to talk money more like which is new for us because it's always been quite flowed in very abundantly yes um, so that's a new challenge that we're doing therapy around just because it's sometimes it's easier just to have that p- third person to like yes, totally. mediate, especially if I some, can sometimes be quite straight to the point um, yes. about things. Yeah, because I, I often find that I'm like, like I'm curious to know whether like, you know, relationships that put in the work and in the initial stages like they're like committed to like really deeply communicating and showing up and doing doing that with each other like does that aid for um less work later down the line and yeah i guess your experience what i'm hearing is that like yes in a sense but also you're consistently committed to showing up for yourselves in the relationship so it's just part of it i think it's just part of it but i do think you need to have that strong foundation at the start and that i I think it's more about both of you being on the same page that it is a priority for both of us to be working on ourselves first and Mm. foremost and that we we are committed as a relationship to continue growing and and evolving together and you can't take it for granted like it is a constant process till the day you die i think yeah 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 that's so interesting okay one more question around your relationship and then I just want to switch to something totally different. But, and I know that you've only got 10 more minutes. So mm-hmm. um, when you've had those moments of contention within your relationship, like gone through the challenges, like the, do you want to have babies situation and you've had time apart, how, or any challenges that you've faced, how have you sort of, come back together and like reconnected after that because I know that can be a really hard part for a lot of couples and relationships where like Mm. it's like this awkward stage of like how do we reconnect Mm. that's a good question no one's ever asked me that um we pretty easily come back and reconnect like we don't take we don't do silent treatments or we don't have any I think the longest we'd go being pissed off and in in it like in the kind of process of it all would be like a day and then but it takes us a lot quicker now like it's a couple of hours and we're both just like laughing and you know I mean we had an argument yesterday morning because Nick so an example Nick Mm. was doing the washing up and then he goes fuck who fucking cleaned the knives? They've fucking got um, grease all over them. And I was that's really out of character for him. So I was like, ooh, he's obviously got something going on underneath the not clean knives because that's really out of character. And I was like, don't fucking talk. Like, what the fuck? What's up your nose? Yeah. Like, you know, like, 
I don't know who didn't clean the knives. Who gives a shit? Re-clean them, put them back on the sink. And he's like, don't fucking talk to me like that. And I was like, all right, so we're not going to go on that coffee date this morning because you have got – because we were going to go on a coffee date. I was like, because clearly you're pissed or you've got something going on and you need solitude because I know if he's like this, he needs time by himself. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm going to take Sol. You go do your thing. I'll do my thing. I don't want to be around you, especially when you're just throwing around f bombs like that. I don't. I love swearing, but it's like, no, nah, and it's not. Yeah, so I'm just like no. It's an aggressive energy. It's an aggressive. Yeah, I'm just like yeah. You got shit to do. Tuesday morning energy. So you know, we kind of he huffed and puffed, went to the bedroom, laid on his phone in the bed, didn't even go for coffee. I was like, mate, get up, like <laughs> get out. And um, anyway, long story short, our son, interestingly, wouldn't get out of Nick's car so that I could take him. So Nick was like, just get in the car. We'll go together. And I was like, okay, stop. So I went around to like him sitting in the driver's seat in the half and puff. And I was like, what's going on? Like, it's not about the knives. Mm. He's like, just get in. We've got to go. And I was like, nah, I'm not getting in and going on a coffee date if you're in this mood. Let's just talk about what's really going on. Like, are you worried about something? I knew exactly what he was worried about, but I was like, is there something going on? Anyway, he was like, he just said, yeah, I'm just worried about money and you know, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. Like, you know, I put my hand on his knee. I was like, thank you for sharing. Cause he shared some stuff and then gave him a big hug and like genuinely just put my hand on his heart, like on his back. And was like, it's okay. Like, it's all going to be okay. You know? Yeah. And then we then we could move forward and then we had a great time. We took Sol to the park, had a coffee. It's good. But it's like being able to catch and understand your partner too, I think it is important. But catch those moments of like mm. this could escalate into a huge argument about dishes and it's not yes. about the dishes. But it's like not not everyone has that awareness to go, yeah, to catch it in time before it escalates into like a two day fucking hoo-ha about yeah yes I love that I love I really really love what you're saying around that it's like actually just identifying that this is out of character this is like an emotional reaction that they're having and then actually like what's beneath this and how can I meet this with a space of like compassion and understanding as opposed to like reactivity and and making him wrong me right it's like well he's just overloaded so it's coming out in anger and frustration but really there's stuff going on so yeah yeah we don't hold on to stuff and money is fucking huge as well in terms of stress like i know for myself like i studied the whole of last year and like money is a fucking stress attack on the nervous system if you're if you're worried about like how you're going to live mm-hmm. the life that you want to live or even how you're going to pay your rent this month, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, yeah, it can really put a lot of stress on things. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's also really good. Like I see it as a really good turning point in our relationship to have these this challenge come up now mm-hmm. because it's like there is no fucking about, like a baby's nearly about to be born. So let's just change the way we do things. Like it's not it's not hard. There's so much money out there just floating about. Yeah, <laughs> there really is like it's just okay how do we have some fall into our hands (laughs) how do we attain it how Hmm. do we get it okay i'm gonna ask you really quickly what are your personal red flags like your red flag as in my red flag is sometimes i'm like a selfish bitch (laughs) what you mean like a red flag I thought you meant a red flag initially, like if I were to go into a relationship, but what's like, I think so many people perceive red flags to be like other people's red flags, like, oh, that's a flag. but like, what are yours? <laughs> oh, I don't have any. I'm perfection. 100%. <laughs> no, not. Um, I can be quite manipulative. I'm really good at manipulating, like really subtle, artful manipulation. Um, I'm also quite good at emasculating if I want to, which is really horrid and something that really bugs Nick. Um, Because I don't do things like I'm not a bitch where I'm like, you're a fucking C-U-N-T and you're a fucking pathetic loser. I don't ever say stuff like that. 
<laughs> I go in sideways really subtly if, if I want to hurt somebody. And I've caught myself over the years because I used to be a real bitch. But so manipulation and a bit of emasculation thrown in for good measure are my two red flags that, you know, I do a lot of work on because it's not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm always right. <laughs> of course, of course you are. Of course, I'm always right. So yeah, that that brings a little bit of um, conflict every now and then. Yes. Okay. What are your green flags? Oh, I'm just wonderful. Fucking <laughs> amazing. No, you know, I'm a really loving, generous person. I think, and I really do. Um, uh, you know, I feel like I give a lot when I'm in a relationship. Like when I'm in, I'm just in a hundred percent. Even with with my girlfriends, like there's no half assed. It's like I'm in or I'm out. It, yeah. And and that's the same as my romantic relationships. I really feel like I I I'm invested, and um, I think that's a green flag. Is that I can love. I have a lot of love to give. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I honestly could talk for days about a lot of different things that I think I'm great at. Just the same as what I'm not so great at, but yeah. I love that. I love that. And if you could give one piece of advice to your younger self in the realms of sex, love and relating, what would it be? Oh, shit. Oh, just to be more honest, just to be really honest with people, like rather than sleeping around with, say, two or three guys without telling them, just be honest about where I'm at and what I want and what I'm up to just so that I'm not feeling like I'm going behind people's backs. Or, yeah, just a lot more honesty and um, listening to my heart more, mm. um, saying no more. Yeah. Beautiful. And one last question. Um, you talk about good sex, takeaway sex, ecstatic sex. It's one mm. of my favorite podcasts that you've ever created. Mm. I like it specifically because you refer to takeaway sex being like the McDonald's of sex. Like you fuck, yeah. you have a one night stand, whatever it is, you wake up the next day and you feel hungover or like gross from your yeah. decision to have a Big Mac. Yeah. Good sex? How would you describe good sex? Good sex is just like, I'm horny, let's fuck. Kissing, okay. um, some sort of penetration, yeah. um, have an orgasm, have a cuddle, go to sleep, wake up the next day, not really think about it. But, you know, sex life is kind of ticking over, that kind of thing. You know, it's just like, yeah, okay. it was good. It was good. Okay. And then ecstatic sex, what is that to you? Um, that's like, it's like the sex that you have where you're like, oh my God, that was fucking mind blowing. You know, the one where you're like, next day you say to your partner or lover or whoever, or your best friend, you're like, oh my God, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. That was just, and you just feel so energized by it mm -hmm. and so deeply connected and potentially even think about it more. Whereas good sex, you kind of just get on with life. It's like you've had sex, cool. Yeah. Um, and it's just, a, I think, a more of a, like, dare I say, a spiritual experience. Like there's something greater than you yeah. in there rather than just a fuck. Yeah. And what would be your final, one last question, what would be your biggest tip to attaining ecstatic sex? With a love partner. I just want to say about ecstatic sex, that's not just for relationships. Like I have had some of them the most ecstatic sexual experiences with people I barely know. Yeah. Like so it really depends on the people that you are choosing to have sex with. Mm. Yeah, it's not necessarily in relationship. Um what did you say? What was the question? What would be your like greatest tip to attaining ecstatic sex? 
just do work on yourself to be that ecstatic lover that you've or that you really want to that you want to meet because so many of us want like the dream partner the dream sex god or goddess Mm. but we're not that (laughs) so we're looking for something that we can't match like our lovers are a mirror of ourselves and so I would just recommend like do the work, what's getting in the way of you being in touch with your own sexuality and your own pleasure. Mm -hmm. How can you love yourself up first and, you know, self-pleasure and really believe in yourself and like feel Mm -hmm. like you've let go of past trauma, all the things so that you can move, you can basically manifest and like attract in energetically lovers who meet your energy or who are just even more fantastic so that they can inspire you to like level up your sex mm. game. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Yes. So much. That's a whole other episode really, isn't That's it? A just... episode. I know. I just wanted to end on some sexy shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. We've got to end on sexy <laughs> shit. We can't end on lasagna meat. That's for sure. <laughs> end on lasagna meat. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the vegans who are just like, Probably not even still listening after the first five minutes of our combo. <laughs> I was talking about full cream cows, yogurt, and lasagna oh meat. God. It's all welcome here. I eat it all, so it's all welcome. Mm. But I did. I am doing like a series of content creating your favorite meal as like part of what will come before your show. Even though you're not receiving it, I'll be making it. And <laughs> that sucks. Can you lasagna. not move to Australia, please? <laughs> We're not going to do that, but apple crumble's cute and chic, so we might do that. <laughs> I love a good apple crumble. How good. How good. So good. Um, all right, my love. Well, I've loved this last hour that we've spent together, and mm-hmm. you're amazing, and thank you so much for coming on and sharing your vulnerable truth of your relationship, and, yeah, mm-hmm. I just feel very honoured to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, Yeah, it's just been fun. It's always fun with you, Stace. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Authentic Sex Podcast. If you love the show, please hit follow wherever you are listening and leave me a review. And if you really, really, really loved it, please share the podcast with your friends, family and social media followers. Doing this together as a community, we can make an impact and support the world to feel more sexually empowered and free and just get the word out about these free resources. If you'd like to join me for daily updates and inspiration, you can find me on Instagram, which is at Juliet, J-U-L-I-E-T underscore Allen, A-L-L-E-N. And you can also head on over to my website to join any of my offerings, pleasure school the intimacy blueprint uh, and you can also treat yourself to the juliet pleasure wand at www.juliet j-u-l-i-e-t hyphen allen a-l-l-e-n dot com